Slippery Rock NYC's animation podcast. I'm your host, Rob Powers. Uh, welcome back. I haven't been able to do these in a long time because of uh, a lot of freelance work and keeping real busy through the year. Uh, I was lucky enough to finish that robot music video that you might have seen on YouTube or on the website here um, called Test that finished up in last April. And then during the summertime, there was a lot of work to be done. Uh, I actually was uh, able to work with Moby to do a lot of his promotional materials, and we actually did uh, two music videos for him. Uh, you can check the links out on the website on slipperyrocknyc.com. So what I'm going to do today is gonna, I'm going to build a displacement map that we're going to be using in After Effects to give a second angle to this flat image, and in, in doing so, we'll be creating a 3D image. Um, what I like to do is start to build from the back f to the front here. So the farthest away would be black. Whatever's going to be the closest will be white. So let's first just fill in the black here. So hit select black and then choose your paint bucket tool and just fill. That's going to be the farthest away from us. So let's lower this opacity so we can see what we're looking at. And then let's go to the next layer and we'll highlight these rows of trees here in the back. We'll use the um, lasso tool, but let's also feather here uh, about five pixels. And what we're going to do is we're going to just draw over this, these back trees, and then we're going to fill it with white, and then we're going to play around with the the uh, amount of white here. What we want to do is keep it uh, pretty dark, closer to the black as possible. So let's fill this with um, with white here. And let's look at that. Let's turn this off. Let's put this at 100. Okay, and right now we have this layer at 20. That's pretty good. What we can do, we can leave them all separate or we can merge them down. Um, I like that gray, so let's actually select that gray and fill it with that gray instead of um, having the opacity down. We'll start with that gray. So let's fill it. So now it's that gray and the op opacity is 100. And then from now on, we're going to build from that dark to white. Um, for the general uh, landscape here, we kind of want to have the, the the gradient go from this dark to a white here. So let's do that now. Let's build a gradient. So we're going to go from there, and we're going to go to pure white here. Now we have our gradient. Let's choose our gradient tool. Make sure it's linear, and click and drag to the back. So we have this here, and let's move it behind the trees. And let's also delete the top of the gradient here, so we just go straight to black. Okay, so if we have the black, so we have black, we have the tree line, we have this gradient to foreground. Um, and then what I like to do is use this gradient for judging the depth of things. So um, if I lower this now, so you see here there's these rocks. Um, I usually would try to look at where on the bottom of the rocks where they meet the gradient and then that will be the full color of the rock. So if this is like a medium gray, this all would be the same gray. So let's see what it looks like here. Um, let's turn this down just to see through what we have. And let's, so like right about here is where I'm going to choose where what color these rocks should finally be. Let's put it back to 100. And then let's use the eyedrop picker. Okay, so we picked our gray. Let's highlight a new layer. Turn these off for now so we can see our rocks. And let's start selecting those rocks. I think we should just do this whole front here. Maybe select these trees for now. Okay. So this layer is going to be all that one color of gray. Let's switch back to our paint tool. Select. Let's, let's see what this looks like together so far. Um, you can see that this white here is a little bit, this shouldn't be as bright. It should be actually a little bit darker than these rocks. So let's actually brighten up our rocks a bit. Um, let's click this and we'll just fill it with a brighter white. There we go. That works better. And then let's look at. Let's look back at the photo here. And it'd be nice to break up some more layers here. So let's break up these rocks in this foreground here. So we use our lasso tool again. 
and we'll highlight these rocks here. Maybe this rock here on the right here. And let's fill this layer with a lighter white than what those rocks were. Okay, deselect. Let's see what that looks like now. So we have a, new, a layer of white here, another layer, and then the distance here. Might want to break it up with a little bit more in here. Um, let's see what would look natural. Um, uh, it's pretty, pretty messy here. Um, so you might not get a good selection of a, a good break for where you should select things. Um, but the other thing you could do is maybe add. Let's lock the opacity. Um, you could add more layers here. So if we use our paint tool, our brush, make it pure white. Let's put this down to like 60. So we're going to start adding on top of what we already have. Um, let's turn this down so we can see through it. And B, and let's bring up our brush a bit bigger. So now we can even add some more um, change in perspective by adding this extra white on top. So as you can see, it's really white and kind of gray. Uh, we can do the same thing to this next layer. But we want to make sure that it doesn't get any brighter than this, otherwise it'll match. And there will be no depth change at all. Um, let's just see what we have. So it looks like right about here is where there might be a nice place to have extra depth. So let's change our brush to about 30. Go back to this layer, make sure our alpha channels are locked so that we don't paint outside the box here. Um, we can turn 